Hi, in this particular video, we're going to be looking at rearranging formulas. So these kind of levels, um, I've made this one slightly trickier. So it's going to be around about grade six at GCSE Maths. Um, please do stop the video, have a go at each of the question and then compare your solutions. I hope it's useful to you. I look forward to seeing you inside the next video. Hi, in this particular video, we're looking at rearranging formula. These particular questions do come up fairly frequently in GCSE maths. It's well worthwhile getting to grips with uh, being able to work through these types of questions. So please do stop the video, have a go at the question, compare your solution. OK, let's have a look at the first one then. There's actually three questions in this particular worksheet. And if you follow the link below, you'll be able to download it. Please do have a go. OK, make T the subject of the formula V equals a fifth of T plus 5W. Well, immediately, as I'm sure you appreciate, you've got this problem that this is going to be a fifth of T. But with a lot of these types of questions, it's far better to leave this as a positive value. OK, now I know we're very comfortable reading left to right, but actually sometimes within algebra it's better to leave it as positive and be reading this as right to left. So I've got this plus 5w, I'm going to get rid of it by minusing 5w. Now if I do that, I lose that, which is great, and on the right hand side I get one fifth of t, which is brilliant. However, the problem I've got is that I have to balance the equation, so I need to minus 5w on the left hand side as well. So on the left hand side, I'm going to end up with V minus 5W. Now that equals a fifth of T. So if I want to make that a whole amount of T, what I need to do is I need to multiply this by 5. And again, just the same as we did before, if we make it on the right hand side to be a whole value of t, so 1 fifth times 5 is t, which is great, I need to also do it on the right on the left hand side as well. Now you've got to remember this 5 is multiplying both of these two terms. So it's better to put them into brackets. OK, and that would be the answer to the question. Now, I do appreciate, as I mentioned right at the very beginning, that this is reading right to left. So we're saying T equals five brackets V minus five W. OK, what you might be more comfortable with is just changing this around to read it left to right as we would do normally. OK, and that kind of skill you're going to need to develop with a lot of these types of questions. So let's move on then to question number two. Make H the subject of the formula. I'm really sorry about my dreadful printer. OK, it's, it's not quite come out quite right there, but hopefully you'll get the idea that we've got the square root of a fraction 2H plus 1 divided by 3. So the first thing is I need to get rid of that square root. Now, to get rid of that square root, what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides of the equation. OK, because the opposite of a square root is a square. So therefore, on the right hand side, I'm just going to get the fraction 2h plus 1 over 3. On the left hand side, I've got m squared. OK, now, just as we had before, we've got this denominator that we need to get rid of, which is this three. So therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by three, because if I do that, I lose that denominator. And on the right hand side, I get two H plus one. On the left hand side, I get three M squared because I've always got to balance the equation. So three on both sides. OK, so now we're in a position where hopefully we can start to um, get this to the point where I've got H as the value or as the subject of the formula. So this plus one is going to cause me a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little arrow up there, just make use of the space. So I'm going to rewrite that as 3m squared equals 
2H plus 1. I'm going to minus 1 from both sides, get rid of that, and I've got 2H. And on the left-hand side, I've got 3M squared minus 1. OK, hopefully that was OK for you. It's exactly the same as we would do with an awful lot of linear type um, equations. OK, so this is two values of H. I just want one value of H. So I'm going to divide by two again, both sides, and that's going to give me H equals. Now, just be really careful about this because we want to divide both terms by two. So therefore, we write it as a fraction. OK, what we don't write is 3m squared minus 1 divided by 2, because if you use bit mass, that assumes that minus 1 divided by 2 is the bit that you do first. OK, so we've got to make it very clear that we're dividing both of these terms by 2. So therefore, it's better to write it as a fraction. OK, so we've now got h as the subject of the formula, a be it that we're reading right to left. So we're just going to write it down. The other way is h equals 3m squared minus 1, all divided by 2. And that is the answer to that particular question. OK, so let's move on then to question number three. Now, question number three, on the surface of it, doesn't look too bad, but actually we're going to need to be able to factorise, or at least certainly to recognise that we've got to factorise. Now, because of that, or well, the reason that is, is because if we're trying to make y the subject, we've got a y here, but then we're going to end up with 2ay when we expand that bracket. So let's just do that and see what we end up with. So on the left-hand side, we're going to get 3y plus 6. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to write that as 5a rather than a5. It just sounds a little bit better to write it as 5a, but it means exactly the same. And then I've got a times minus 2y. Well, that's minus 2a. Y. OK, so we've got an immediate problem that we've got Y's there, Y's there. We're trying to make Y the subject. And worst of all, this is minus or negative 2AY, which just makes it just much more difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this positive. Now, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take it away from this side by doing the opposite. And then I'm going to add it to this side as well to keep the balance. So what I end up on this side, and I have to write it out longhand, is 3y plus 2ay plus 6, don't forget the 6, equals 5a. All right, hopefully that's OK for you. And again, like a lot of these things, it's this very kind of methodical approach you need with these sorts of questions. OK, so let's find a way of getting these two terms together and get rid of this plus six. Well, I'm going to minus six. If I do that, that's brilliant, but I've got to do it to both sides. So I end up on the left hand side with 3y plus 2ay equals 5a minus six. All right, well, we're getting closer. And this is the bit where really you've got to remember this technique of factorization because what this will allow me to do is to, uh, y is common to both of these terms. So if I factorize it for y, I get y times three plus two a, and that equals 5a minus 6. So I haven't changed anything. All I've done is I've just got that uh, factor, factoring in place. OK, well, that's good, though, because if I divide now both sides by 3 plus 2a, it means I can lose this. OK, so I'm just running out a little bit of space, but I'm going to do what I did before, move that up there, and I'm just going to rewrite it as y 3 plus 2a equals 5a minus 6. OK, just for the sake of making sure that we've got a good flow on the video. OK, so as I mentioned, if I divide both sides by 3 plus 2a, what I end up with is y, which is the subject, which is exactly what I want, equals 5a minus 6, so this one, all divided by 3 plus 2a. And that is the answer to this particular question. OK, so it's that little trick of factorising with these that you've got to be a bit careful of. And also because they gave us a negative 
2A here. It's just much easier if you make that into a positive 2A on the left hand side. And with this particular uh, rearrangement, we are already reading from left until right, so we can just leave it as it is. Okay, I hope that's been useful for you. Please do um, like the video if you found it useful. Add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. There are other videos on the channel, and please do uh, have a look at some of the other videos. Subscribe to the channel and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.